This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geek show number 353, which, by the way, last week I said 532. I think I saw Aaron's eyes look funny at me. Anyways, recorded on April 26th, 2018. Here on Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite tech gadgets. News, reviews, product updates, and conversation, all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Carlson, broadcasting live from the beautiful Bellevue, Nebraska. Mike, we are on a run of weather that's just fantastic. A little rain, sunshine, spring is here, right? And it's supposed You're- to stay around this weekend, which is yeah. nice. We uh, went on a turkey hunt last week, and I'm going back down this weekend for more turkey hunting. And the weather's been great for it. I was worried that we were going to still have snow on the ground or something, but it's, it's yeah. it came around. Nebraska's no. finally coming around. It's beautiful. Did you get anything when you're turkey hunting? We're talking we about that. Last we got week. close. We got super, super close, but uh, I couldn't couldn't bring them anymore. So Friday morning, I'm driving to work. I'm thinking about you. I look to the right, and in my neighbor's yard, two big turkeys. <laughs> See, and that's what we saw more driving between the two farms that we hunted than we actually Ooh. saw in the field. Which is the worst. Well, I could have taken one out with my car, but did, did you take any gadgets with you, honey? Any any tech gadgets? Uh, you know what? We were very ga- turkey hunting. Um, besides all the different calls, so I love using all different calls, which I guess you could call those gadgets. They don't. None of them are electronic uh, when you turkey hunt, but all sorts of different calls and decoys, which makes it a lot of fun. But no, no really gadgets besides um, an app called Huntwise, which you plug in all your different locations of your blinds and it'll predict for you which ones are the best to use. It's more for deer because it's based on scent and wind patterns where that wind's going, but it also takes into account weather and it says, okay, this is going to be the best time to hunt 7 a.m. And it's, you can slide throughout the day and your prediction says, ah, good, bad based on the weather. So it's, it's a very interesting app and it, it worked out actually pretty well. Like I said, better for deer than Turkey. Um, but still a good app for turkey hunting. No, that's that's pretty cool. That's exactly what I think I was looking for when I said any any tech. I've been using, speaking of the weather, and since I'm we're huge weather nerds, um, I've been using the Weather Channels app for, for weather. And this that's what I use too. Has been giving me notifications. And like yesterday, it was like, it sent me a notification. I opened it, it was like, today is a beautiful day to run. And I really? thought, yeah, I was like, interesting. And then- I, Today's notification is cold and flu risk, and it's got some activity in there. It's kind of keeping me engaged with little, with the weather. Yeah, like like little reminders of things that you know. And then the other thing, it's been crazy on these apps. It's like it's gonna rain in three minutes. That's and, I was gonna ask if you have those notifications. So those are my favorite. Rain's gonna start at six oh nine for the next twenty five minutes. Sure enough, six oh nine starts raining. Now the duration sometimes can be a little bit off, but it. it it was great. Talk about uh, an app for hunting. So we obviously had our phones because we sit in a blind and um, we were getting alerts as soon as the rain was going to come in. So we knew pretty much exactly when those, that rain was going to flow through. And so the combination between the Weather Channel app and the HuntWise app was was pretty nice. It was a good way to know and predict and plan our hunts because we had yeah. all of our blinds programmed into the app. No, that's awesome. Uh, giving you kind of some local, I just, they've gotten crazy good with the localization of GPS and and where and Doppler and where it's going to rain and how it's going to rain and how hard it's going to rain and sort of lightning in it. And Mm -hmm. so we just had our tornado kind of, you know, tornado warning drill today at work, which is a good sign that spring is here. And of course I get an email. So now if there's a tornado warning, I get an email, I get an alert on my phone, I get a phone call and the, the, the building speaks to me. (laughs) There's no, there's no way you can not know about a tornado coming your way, except when you're in the tornado, the tornado shelter area, you can't hear anything. (laughs) So like how, how ironic is that? That Right. the one spot. So we were sitting in there and I told them earlier, if they just put a little, they'd have no problem getting people into the the shelter area. If they just set up a bar, right. Hey, there you go. Have a yeah. 330 tornado shelter exercise. Everybody will show up if you have sure. an hour, right? Yeah. So, yeah, we're, so we're sitting in the shelter, and then they're like, hey, uh, some, at one point, somebody, we were all talking to each other. Somebody goes, hey, can we hear if this thing's over? And sure enough, we had to open the door to be able to hear inside the stairwell. So Everyone's gone. No one's in the building. No, anymore. it's empty. It's completely yeah. empty. The building's gone. No, I'm just kidding. So uh, anyways, uh, that's signs of spring. Of course, we appreciate it. Here in Nebraska, it was a long winter. It seemed like it went on forever, but we're glad it's here. Don't forget, you can get the post show, the, all the show notes. Post show will be later. You get all the show notes out at theaverageguy.tv. Don't forget, you can listen on the mobile app, and more and more of you are doing that, which is just, again, as amazes me. 
head out to the uh, to uh, homegadgetgeeks.com, download that Android iPhone completely free. We thank LastPass for their sponsorship of that. Don't forget, rate, review uh, this program in Apple Podcasts or in Google Play, if that's the way you listen to it. I don't know anybody. I'd love to hear from you. If you actually listen to this thing on Google Play, I would love to know why. So send me an email, Jim at the Average Guy to T. I don't know anybody who subscribes that way, but you can. A lot of Apple podcasts. By the way, it's been a long time since somebody rated or reviewed my podcast. If you got something nice to say, if it's not nice, don't write it. Not interested. But if it's nice, drop that on iTunes. It'd be nice to to do that. I think you can do it from your phone. So if you want to do it you that can. way. You can. I have written several reviews from my phone. Good. Well, yeah. jump out there, uh, rate and review us. We always appreciate it. If you're on YouTube... Uh, we have a live channel and we have a recorded channel. So subscribe to both of them if you can. And uh, and we'd love to have you do that. Just subscribe, click the notification bell. Mike, we were talking, I think there's three levels of notification now. There's like uh, sometimes, often, all the time. Those are like the three things for the notification. So you have complete control of it with that notification bell. Really handy because you do get notified when we go live if you've subscribed to the channel. And of course, like us on Spreaker. And I've gotten a bunch of those since I started saying this as well. So we appreciate it. Big, huge thanks to Erin Lawrence for joining us last week. She's dynamite, Mike. I mean, I, I'm, I'm tempted to bring her on once a month. That girl does some serious gadgets, right? Totally could. We should just have her be the host. I mean, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Erin, we're going to drink beer. Yeah. And we just talk. want you to talk. Right. <laughs> So she's pretty fantastic. Just released a home theater uh, review. She talked about that on the show. She got oh, some she home did? theater. Yeah, she released seated. it. The video came out, and awesome. uh, I'm, I got to get them. I, I can't. Like, I need, I need theater seating. Like, In your living room? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. No, for sure. So I don't know if we'll do it now. We may do it when we move. That may be one of those things. I think those are a couple grand each. So right. maybe that's one of those things we buy new in the move. But super cool tech. Um, she has a couple new, um, uh, she has a couple new reviews coming out on the Echo Spot and the Fitbit Versa. Make sure you're following her on Twitter. It's at Aaron L Y Y C. There'll be a link to it in the show notes, uh, so you can follow her. But some pretty amazing stuff, and she's just an overall great person. So, yeah. Aaron, appreciate you coming on. Um, don't forget, Mike and I uh, we're doing crypto. And we're asking the question, what question did I say we were going to ask? Worth. Is it worth it? What, what is, is it, worth? it worth it? And that's just a question I hear all the time, especially when prices are low. Like, well, is it worth it to mine burst? I don't know. We're going to talk a little bit about that in the post show. We'll make this week's post show free again for everybody on Patreon. Um, speaking of Patreon, let's thank those Patreon subscribers, Mike. When it's just you and me, we get a little bit of time uh, to be able to do that. This list is pretty impressive. Let me Let me read. These are all the people who support us on patreon ready here we go ryan jackson brian hour james uh, duncan amar riggins or reagans nathaniel lindley chad davis trevor stevens jonathan hill chris brown kevin mm, i kevin i don't know your last name because it just says kevin mark robson ryan kirshner jay cleveland Payne, john larson chad johnson by the way i need to get john larson back on here from aim kevin campbell i'm sorry gavin campbell i know a kevin campbell but this is not him it's Gavin. Gavin Gavin. <laughs> yeah, Emily Prokop, from a host of the story behind. If it's a podcast you're not listening to yet, I have to seriously ask you why. Paul Brern, Mike Shell, uh, Michael Ray, uh, Eddie Ramirez, Kevin Schoonover, Justin Simmons, John Biggs, Eric Janofsky, Peter Dennerit, Jim Shoemaker, Dwayne Johnson, Malcolm Lacey, Mike Weger. Thank you, Mike Weger, mm -hmm. and uh, Steve Sleeper over at the North Omaha History Podcast. That's a good Those, list. That is a, a, that's a healthy Patreon list. Man, that is super. So we thank you for your your subscription out here. Many of you are in the uh, the one and five dollar plans, and of course we appreciate that. We'll make the post show free and open for everybody again this week. We did that last week uh, with some success, and so that's available to you as well. We will be having some crypto conversation. If you're listening live, hang a round. There's Mike. There's a, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, we should pimp our Twitter, too. I Just because I have been super into Twitter and your community, uh, we've talked about this, Anthony and and Brian and uh, all of them are great on Twitter. But if you don't follow us on Twitter, I'm Uyghur Tech, so W-I-E-G-E-R Tech, T-E-C-H. And then you're just Jake Hollison, right? Super easy, Jake Super Hollison. easy. Yeah, but you guys should definitely, I've been loving it, so reach out to me on Twitter if you want to. Uh, I, I've been loving it. it is my, I sit almost all night on Twitter. I replaced Facebook with Twitter, so I'm still not on my phone any less. But it's more relevant, and I'm having more quality interactions with people on Twitter. So I've been really enjoying talking to you guys 
over there. Yeah, Twitter's a great way to do it. We don't do a lot of it. And so, I mean, we do like, now that's the wrong way to say it. We do enough that it's fun, not so much that you're overwhelmed. So right. if you're like, if you were on Twitter and you're like, oh God, I don't want to get tweeted out all the time. It's maybe one conversation a week or maybe two, but they're really good. Like they're not junk. Right. And oh, so totally. T- Tony is the best tweeter, by the way. If you're yep. not following We've Tony. talked about that. Yeah, yeah totally. You got to be following Rainer because that dude is pretty amazing in his tweets. So jump out there. Join us uh, just in the conversations. Loop folks in. Uh, it, same thing with the uh, with the, with our group on Facebook. So if you, the, if you go facebook.com slash groups slash the average guy, all one word. Um, there's some great like it, it doesn't maybe a couple things a week. Uh, Ernesto put out there. That uh, Taiwan graphics card makers to see shipments plunge 40% in April. That's the story he put in there. He says, let's hope so. Would love to see graphic card prices back to normal. Mining crap that killed PC building, that killed the PC building market. Yeah, it, it, did. it did. It totally did <laughs> it with did everything. It. Yeah, it did indeed. And then uh, Ryan Kirshner, one of our Patreon subscribers uh, as well, had put a Western Digital 8 terabyte deal out there in the group. Which is significant because I've been buying the Seagate drives, which I think are significantly less quality. I was just going to say that. He brought up a very good point. On those WD enclosures, usually you're getting a red, a WD red drive or a white label red where it's pretty much the same quality. Because I think you're right. On these Seagates, speed's not the best. No, they're awful. They're, it's, they're pretty bad. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. if you're using it, like I'm thinking about putting all these into like a big, huge NAS at the end that I don't need to be fast. It's literally just going to be a storage NAS where I'm throwing files and bringing them over. Fine for that, but definitely not a drive you're going to be putting in and using as like a boot drive or anything. No, and there's a name. They call them something and I forget. Uh, right. sh- shingled. Shingled? Is that what it is? So, I, I, I should know this. I'm doing it off the cuff, so I don't know. But I think it's shingled. Yeah. And they're just not as great. And so they, they're working great now. You know, I got them in a burst configuration. They're working great. They I'm going to be great able... for burst. They're perfect. Yeah. I'm gonna... They're slow to load. They're slow to plot. You just right. have to put up with it. You could speed that up with turbo plotter and an SSD drive. That yep. would absolutely help. It'd take it from months to days, <laughs> literally. But um, uh, I'm, you know, I'm fully intending to resell those drives. They are, will be lightly used. Still in a couple months, I think we're going to see this summer. I think we're going to see some 10 and 12 terabyte drives drop out. And so uh, take a look at, I'll take a look at prices and just see things we're at. But shucking is the right, Tony put that out. Shucking. Oh, well, shucking. I I thought you were, so shucking is taking the drives out. I was thinking of the way the drives are like the way they're. Yes, that's, I was too. Style of drive. Yeah, it's a different kind. I forget forget what that is, but. uh, They'll give it to us in the chat. Yeah. SMR. There it is. Ken got it. They're SMR drives. And uh, SMR. Yep. Mm-hmm. No, that's it. That's the right. That's the term I was looking for. So, anyways, uh, Ryan was kind enough to throw that deal out there. They're one fifty at Best Buy right now, which, which is would be price. the same price as the Seagate. So at that point, you should definitely go grab the WD instead. Yeah. No. Right on. Oh, totally. Like I would. I think if you're talking about shucking, I think you're going to have a lot better luck shucking out of a Western Digital external than you're going to have shucking out of the Seagate drives, especially right. when I bought them and how they sold them and. So, and then the last story out in the Facebook group, Michael posted by Michael Ray, he, he posted uh, one of those external razor core uh, drives that allows you through firewire or uh, no, 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 that's not the right. Um, it's not Thunderbolt. The right thing. Thunderbolt. Thank you. Um, to uh, it's basically an external graphics card. And uh, Mike, I looked at these when we first started mining, uh, you can plug these in. So like if a laptop don't have enough GPU, you can through Thunderbolt, plug these into this and it's actually got a slot for a GPU and you can buy a GPU, slam it in there and extend the the processing power of your laptop. It's pretty Interesting. cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't, I have no idea what the performance is. I'm just trying to give you an idea of the kinds of stories we get in our Facebook group. So if you haven't joined it yet, facebook.com slash group slash the average guy, you have to, I have, I have to let you in. So just ask to be let in. I'll let you in right away. But we'd love to have you join us. But that's not a bad idea because I think about, so I would love to play Fortnite on my MacBook because they have Fortnite is on the Mac. But this, I have a rare, very new MacBook, which uh, it's specced out, um, but it can't run Fortnite. If I just kept that external graphics card thing on my desk where I would come down to play, I take my laptop, go wherever. But when I come down here, it plugs in. If I could run games, it'd be nice. Yeah. No, I looked at them when we first started doing this. I thought, 
you know, if I could get those things for not to, they're, they're not that they're expensive. Cheap. Yeah. They're not yeah, that they're expensive. And then you right now trying to buy a graphics card. Right. Luck. Yeah. Do you think with graphics cards right now, do you think eBay, like, do you trust anything on eBay at this point? That's coming. We're, we're coming off of a year of mining and you know, every single GPU that's being sold on eBay was right. run full speed for the last year or, or, or so. Do you, Mike, do you, do you buy anything on eBay right now? Do you think? Unless I, no, I, I don't. Okay. Yeah. yeah I mean, talking I, G, GPUs is what we're talking about. Right. right. I mean, that's so, yeah, do, I don't know if this is, and there's going to be, I think you're going to start seeing them cheap. Because I think there's just going to be, be a sell-off, and there's there's going to be no demand for those because ever like you said, everyone knows that they've been run, yeah, run down, yeah, yeah. for the last year, if not more than a year. I I'd say if you get a good deal and you can get two, I think then you're. I mean, if if the price does kind of start to plummet, you could get a couple, and then you would you would ensure yourself maybe one of those two might work. And we might get down to a point where they're so cheap. It's like, okay, that's worth giving it a shot. Right. Especially for someone like me. I just want one to play games every now and then. I'm not going to be, I just need a graphics card to throw in a Windows box that, you know, I'm not going to be doing hardcore stuff on it all the time. So even if it did go out on me after a while, if I can get it cheap enough, which I think you're right, I think we will see those pretty darn cheap. Yeah. Yeah. And I maybe maybe not this summer, but I, I think fall might be the right timing Maybe um, it depends on how this alt market goes. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. we'll talk. Maybe we'll talk more about that in crypto. Yeah. Uh, it always crypto always creeps in. It always creeps <laughs> in. With you and me, we just can't avoid it. But it 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 has so many effects on other things. And as we think about the gaming market, Mike, I think one of the number one complaints I've heard about crypto is from our listeners trying to upgrade their their gaming systems, and it's just nearly impossible. It is to to get. And that I feel going. for them because they're totally right. Crypto has just, I mean, it's made it so difficult, so expensive. Yeah, no, right on. A couple, couple news items. Let's dig in. Um, it, it appears that Gmail has gotten a facelift. Some things have come with it. Uh, what, what have you seen out there uh, as far as Gmail? Yeah, because my account I checked does not have it yet. So you can check in your settings. If you don't have it, um, you can go to your settings and turn it on. But they have given Gmail kind of a massive... Uh, upgrade. I won't, I guess facelift. I, I put that in the notes and it's true because on the, but there's a new bar on the right side and they've added in tasks. And then in your main view, when you're looking at your mail, you now see attachments kind of in line, which some people say you see less emails now on the main screen because there's, it takes up more space per email because you see the attachments, but a lot easier to spot the attachments and open attachments. If you're doing that a lot, I know that if I had that option at work, that'd be great because my primary use is opening and closing those attachments. That would be kind of nice. And then there's a lot of security enhancements too. And these are going to be the interesting thing as it starts to roll out. I want to know the technology behind it. And I don't know if it's only Gmail to Gmail. Sounds like it would be, but there's a ton of new security enhancements like sending it to someone and make them use two-factor before they open the email. Um, so you would think you would send an email to me. It'd be very important. And you want me to double check that it's me before I open it. Things like uh, pretty much calling back the email, which has been around in some form for it a while. Really, it doesn't really work. It doesn't but, really work. So we'll see how yeah. this implementation of it is. Yeah. And then just a few other security enhancements, but it's mainly kind of the facelift. And then the security stuff is coming a lot later, uh, but we'll kind of see, kind of see how it all works, but it's kind of interesting. They kind of made a big deal about all the upgrades they're making. I know, but I, the the feeling I get, it's a little too little too late. Like email, I know we all use it, but it's pretty much like electricity at this point. And I I don't, you know, the article that I read on, I think it was on The Verge, talked about this. And they were like, yeah, Google's going after Microsoft's dominance in email. I saw market. that. And I wasn't even going to bring it up because I didn't think it was even relevant. <laughs> I was like, what? Like, okay, yes, they do. But really, who who's making that much off email today? And I know... Google's tried to modify, you know, uh, monetize it with advertising. I don't think any of that stuff's worked, by the way. Um, in, in email is so broken. Like, it's such a bad thing now. I'm wondering how long it can live before we find other better ways to do this. I mean, the, the company that cracks the code on email and changing the way, because, you know, these features of recall, these features of not being able to forward it, like, hey, Mike, I want to send you an email and I, I want to make sure you can't forward it, right? That's really hard to do on the web. That's right. really hard to do in a web client. 
Microsoft has success with it in exchange because they own the whole, they own the whole, uh, ecosystem. ecosystem right? right. And, and so it's, um, and it's, I think that's why no one has cracked the code because email is a standard protocol that, you know, it, they all interact with each other. I know. It's just horrible and, though. It's horrible. Oh, we would much rather interact like in, in a certain app, whatever your favorite messaging client is that works a lot better. I am so done with email. I spent today, like my whole day was spent helping 26 customers that didn't get an email we sent out yesterday. So we emailed 3000 of our best customers and said, Hey, we have a special offer for you. Here's a coupon code. It's worth 30 bucks off, you know, use it, buy our stuff. Awesome. And then I put a note in our Facebook group that said, Hey, if you didn't get that email, let me know 30, 30 out of, I'd say 3000, let's just say. And varying reasons why, you know, oh, we didn't have the, we didn't have their most current email address on file. Okay. Cause people are changing them all the time for whatever reasons. Uh, sometimes it was delivered and they couldn't find it. Sometimes it was delivered and went to spam. Even though it had gone to spam, they couldn't find it in their spam or they didn't know how to find it in their spam. Like I think we have a ton of emails going to spam. People have no idea they, they, they're even missing. People have stopped checking their spam folders. So right. You can send stuff. And for any reason it gets flagged and put in spam. Like it's emails broken. Like it's any organizations. I have Facebook groups for my customers just so I can tell them they've missed the email <laughs> that we've sent to them. Like, it, you know, it's, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I feel like email gets a bad rap though. Like I've always been like, I agree. There's, there's gotta be something better, but I really don't mind it. I'm maybe one of the very few who actually, I don't, I don't mind it. I, uh, I think it's pretty effective. I like how there's a chain and easy to forward, send the stuff. It's really, I don't think it's too bad. I think you're right in some ways that we are, we're in it. We use it. I use it look like, like a workflow too, but it's days like today. I go, oh man, this is so broken. Like this is right. so bad. There is no chain of custody. There is no, you have no idea if things get there or if they don't, they just go off into the ether. Mm -hmm. Like and, sure, and there really is no control over that message, like we've talked about. Yeah. Right, forwarding is so easy. You, I mean, there could be a lot better way to do it. I, I think that I think there is. Yeah, well, I, we don't know. Somebody needs to disrupt that market. It'd be and a I, new protocol that'll pretty much just be the next big thing. But at that point, a protocol is hard. Yeah. Having one company get big enough, like Facebook, is easy. But then we're having problems, just like we are now, where you're trusting one company with all your data and try and get other private companies to trust them. Protocols are hard to develop. You're talking about something that's cross-platform. That's difficult. Xbox and PS4 players still can't even play together when the game developers want you to be able to. Like, we can't even get cross-platform on video game consoles. I think communication, <laughs> it's just tough. No. I, yeah, I don't, I don't I mind right. email. I do see the problems with it. Yeah. Well, I, we, so many we day, that's my only problem is keeping up with it. But I would have that same problem. I would get those same messages just on a different platform. People are like, oh, it's a time suck. Well, you're gonna still people still need to get those messages to you. It would just be in a different form. So you're gonna have a time suck either way. Yeah. That's my stance on it though. Well, most of my customer interaction happens via Facebook. And I I mean I do tickets, I resolve things, I fix things for people, I have communications both on in threads and in IM. I'm not saying this is right, by the way. Just saying that's kind of how I've been interacting with a lot of our customers. We don't a lot of them don't use Twitter. My co host on Theme Thursday, she uses Instagram. And so all the stuff she sends out, like she, we do our show and then she sends out challenges out of the show. They're all via Instagram. And so she has all this communication and activity. So I don't know if it's one, like I, when I, when, like I said, when we send an email, I have to say, I have to go to the Facebook group and say, Hey, check your email. Cause it's important. And chances are some of you didn't get it. Right. And then we send, we send the same things down through the other channels. Hey, really important message for you. So it's gotten super, super messy. I just wish email was better. And in that regard, I do not think it is the best way to market, right? Like email marketing, I think is completely dead because it gets to spam or it doesn't get read. You even know there's always emails in your organization that come out like once a week and those even you start to not read and then you miss something really important and like, well, it was in the email and you miss. It's not the best way to mass distribute. It is a better group or one-on-one -on -one conversation about a certain topic. I totally agree with you. The yeah. marketing side of it is broken. Yeah, and I prefer one-on-one, -on -one, I prefer instant messaging. That's okay. just the get, put me an IM wherever. I don't care where it's at, whether it's gonna be Facebook or we have 
Skype for Business, which will soon be Teams. That's fine. Put me but in. Doesn't that drive you nuts switching back and forth no, between all uh-uh. the different apps? No. You got Facebook open, you got Skype open, you got your email open. I just click the notification bar and it just pops up and I read it and answer it and boom, okay. uh, away we go. So I um, guess that's true in Windows 10. So you're clicking on that bottom right hand corner of the notifications or whatever, wherever it's showing up. I mean, I'll leave my desk and as I'm walking across the building, which is like a mile and a half, I, I'm i uh, doing, you know, I've switched work from email to my phone and I might. Right jump on Facebook and check some things while I'm going across. And um, I'm not saying those are any better, by the way, but it's just, I guess so, I I guess so frustrated with email. But to the point to this story, I kind of feel like Google's for the first time is late. Like, too little too late. They I are super late. Like, yeah. uh, seriously, we are fixing an interface. Everyone who didn't like it has already left. Everyone who likes it stayed. Mm-hmm. Now you're going to change it? Like, you can't, I don't think you can do that when it's been around. Tony said in the chat room, you know, he's already changed it back to the old mode. When you've done something for this long, it'd be like you and me, Mike, all of a sudden, what, 353 this week? And I'm like, hey, we're going to do, we're going to talk about flowers. Like this is, <laughs> this is now a flower <laughs> podcast, right? Yeah. What do you plant in your garden? Or what kind of fertilizer are you putting on your lawn? Like, well, actually that may be a pretty cool podcast. But that being said, like we're too far into this thing to switch. Like the the listeners who don't like us have left long ago. Right. The ones that really like and are engaged in what we're doing are staying around. This is what I think Google's doing with their with their you know with uh, with their email. It's like I think everybody who stayed at Google liked it because of its simplicity. It's Spartan. It's you know it's it's design look. You know it has a very kind of design wasn't the right word. A very kind of uh, simple. Right. It's just, Mm -hmm. it's just letters. And, and uh, so I just, if they start screwing with it now, I think you're going to be like, those people who don't want that are going to move. And maybe it's just the fact that they made a big news publication about it. If they would have probably, we, they probably could have slipped these in and we probably wouldn't even talk about it. They're just publicizing it as this big thing. And it's like, well, it's not that big. And it's email. So, but you know, then again, I, I put it in the notes to talk about tonight. And yeah. I just, eh, maybe no. it's not as big of a news story no. as it needs to be. You never know. Hey, this one is interesting, though. Disney makes it a is. jacket to simulate physical experiences. Like, we've always kind of been wondering, as we make this jump from VR only to VR complete. In other mm-hmm. words, every part of my body, literally every part, let's not go down there, but every part of my body is covered by VR, Right. Talk a little bit about this jacket that uh, that Disney has made. So I saw this story, and it's actually interesting because Ready Player One came out recently. That is the story of, if you don't know the background, essentially people on Earth living in VR. Like most of them rather would prefer, and they, they have these haptic suits that they wear, so literally it is like living in a second world. Um, and when I read the book Ready Player One, I was like, this is so cool. I cannot wait till it happened. So this story comes out that Disney has actually made a haptic suit. So imagine, uh, I, I saw the top part. It's a jacket you would put on. Let me yeah, show it. the bottom too, right? Does it have the whole? Yeah, let's, let's just suit. flip over. Pull it up. But essentially what yeah. they've done is they've created a jacket with a bunch of tiny air pockets around the entire jacket that is controlled by a motor which fills and deflates the bags extremely fast. And the way that it does it can make you feel all sorts of sensations all over your body. Uh, Think of like uh, in the title, it was like a snake slithering across your body. So if they do that all in the right manner, that's how it works. This is interesting because I just saw a a What's Inside video. I don't know if you're a fan, Jim, on YouTube of What's Inside. They're a great YouTube channel where they actually go on the inside of everything. They just cut stuff up. And they just went and looked, and I'm going to get the brand wrong. I think it was... Was it BMW or Mercedes? Uh, one of their new seats in their car, and they use the same technology to massage your back. They're actually air pockets in the seat that are inflated and deflated to give you that massage feel. It's kind of this new style. I think they're starting to realize that they can be very accurate. They can get very fine motors with air. Um, they can control it easily. I think the pumping thing sounds weird to me. Like I don't know how that's all controlled and quiet. Uh, you would think there would be, you would just hear all the, like the air flowing, but nonetheless, they have created a suit now that can go with your VR goggles and you would literally feel like you are in that world. And that's wow. really where we talked about VR um, versus AR a while ago. 
And I was kind of distant on VR. I was like, you know, augmented reality is kind of the way of the future. VR, I don't know. It's going to be, we have to wait until we can really be immersed. Well, this is that immersive level that once this sort of technology becomes standard, VR is going to be a very, first of all, it's going to be popular and it's going to be really cool. I cannot wait to try out something like this when, when the tech is ready for mainstream. Yeah. Yeah. Well, imagine when we could get some VR in physical therapy. So you might go in and it will strap you in and then it will, it will start maybe moving you to do the the motions that you're supposed to do kind of sense the pain and get get some feedback from you. So you almost have a virtual physical therapist as opposed to, you know, and imagine being able to send something like that home with a, with a guest or with a patient, sorry, with a patient and say, all right, you need to put this on and do this, do these exercises you know, three times a day and the suit walks you through those kind of walks you through those processes. I've seen some of this, uh, Tony might see some of this here in, in the work he does, but you know, when you go in to have surgery, they're pumping air in and out, they're putting things to keep the blood flowing. Right. There's right. Certain, right. And so those are probably primitive versions of this, but these have sensors and resistors and airbags and all kinds of great stuff. You don't really care, to be honest, what it looks like on the outside because no, you're because you're on the inside here <laughs> somewhere yeah. else. Yeah. So they can do I think they could do a lot uh, in that area. And, and I think, you know, in some of those areas like healthcare, or, you know, God, how long will it be before living in a virtual world all day will be better than going to work all mm-hmm. day? And, uh, and so, yeah, I hope that's not the future, to be honest with you. That's funny that ready player one, right. That takes place in like 2047 or something like that. Yeah. And then the, um, creator of the second world of the VR world in that book has an obsession with 1980s pop culture. Mm -hmm. So all the books, movies, uh, video games, arcade games from the 1980s, the creator of the VR world has created a competition. And the winner gets to take over his fortune. And this guy has become the richest man in the world, obviously, because he owns the VR world. And these people have to pretty much study 1980s pop culture. So if you were alive in the 1980s, or even me as a 90s kid, I knew all the references. It's a total geek out on your 1980s, early 1990s pop culture. It's It was a great book. I have not seen the movie yet, but I heard the movie was also very good. Yeah. Well, it could happen. Tony threw in the chat room a smart vest, a link to smart vest. So go to smartvest.com thousand dollars for these yeah well they, but uh, for lung percussion yeah i mean think about that breathing think about what it yeah what it could do to kind of help you keep keep breathing or the th- the therapy of breathing my mom got blood clots at one point mm-hmm. and and then you know that clogged up the the pores in her lungs and she was having trouble breathing and they made her do this you know tube thing where you got to blow the ball up the thing yeah, you know kind of constantly to practice on that so, um, no, pretty cool. I mean, I think there's some, there's more as we think about our sensors getting smaller and our, the, you know, understanding kind of the physics of touch and resistors and what that looks like and how we, and not resistors from an electronic standpoint, but when I push against something, it pushes back to give me that feeling of force, right? That's kind of what we need. So, um, pretty cool, Tony. Thanks for dropping that in the chat room. Of course, that helps when you guys are out here and you join us live. Pretty cool, Mike. What do you think? Did, was there a price on these jackets? I didn't see no. a price. No. I have, I did not. Inflates and deflates in 26 places. Of course, it looks like it was researchers from Disney, MIT, and Carnegie Mellon. That makes total sense. So it'll be interesting to see. I don't think we're that far away from this kind of stuff. So I think we've got some good we got some good technology coming with it. Hey, speaking of that, no, that's a terrible transition. Um, I have been lately, I've been, I don't know why I've been watching more YouTube lately. And I, I don't listen in there's Westworld that's out now. I could be watching that. There's tons of great stuff on HBO, tons of great stuff on Netflix. Yeah. I'm waiting for a man in the high castle season three to come out on prime. And yet I'm catching myself on YouTube. Mike, there's a, but I've caught two new styles on YouTube that I'm wondering if you've seen yet. So, in the show notes, I'll, um, you're going to want to head out to the show notes for these because um, that it'd be, it'd be a lot easier. I'll throw these in the chat room. The first one um, is really a channel that uh, it's called Invicta, I-N-V-I-C-T-A. And it's really kind of this movement on YouTube around uh, old battles from the past. Uh, naval battles, uh, foot battles. I watched 
Um, they did a four-part series on this on the AD 70 siege in Jerusalem, which is really, really cool. The Romans come in and and there's some interesting, it's more than they just crushed the city. The the Jews really gave the Romans a run for their money in AD 70 or 70 AD when they took over Jerusalem. Because of my biblical training, of course, that's a big, it's a big event where they wipe out, they end up just smashing the, the Temple Mount. They burn everything to the ground when they're done and, and walk away. So we spent a lot of time talking about that. But these are like, they're not just cartoons. They're like computer simulations now of like soldiers and positions. And they have, they're, they're like showing them in animated form. And it's really cool. I'm looking at it right now. This is insane. So I'm wondering, are they using like a video game? I to think so. Create yes. the world? I think they might yes. be. Yes. And so it's like the video Super game cool. engines, but they're rendering the stories using the engines. And I don't exactly know how it works. So this is at youtube.com slash user slash, and then it's it's THFE Productions, THFE Productions, if you want to go out there. But Talk about an interactive. We talked about this a while ago with the education stuff. Think about learning about the battles this way. This would have been cool if yeah. this was the way I'd learned. Yeah, and so you have like, you have like Roman soldiers running in like you'd see in a video game and then the, the, the Jewish rebels coming in and then they engage in these sword battles and they're fighting and you're seeing, you know, you're seeing them, sorry, blood and guts and stuff. Right. And, and it's, it's, it's like a real simulation of it and it's interesting and it's cool. Like, and it's accurate. That's the crazy thing about it. So, um, there, I, I'm seeing more and more of these historical events, which is really cool. I saw one more ocean-based or more water-based, and it was the attack on Pearl Harbor. And it was all this stuff, you know, computer planes coming in, you know, the torpedoes, the bombs, the ships sinking and rolling over, some of those kinds of things. All like in a video game mode, but done very, very well. Very um, cool. One of the no, cool, not seen these yet. yeah, these are pretty cool. I've gotten kind of addicted to them. One of the one of the really cool channels that I found. I'll here. I'll throw this in chat room too, and this will be a hard one to uh, to say. Um, oh, you know what? Hold on. Of course, as soon as I went to the channel, they're like, long videos. The music, thirty-five minutes. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're kind. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever sat down and watched them all. But there's this, there's another style, and it's this gameplay where it's called. And again, this all kind of focuses around the Twitch idea, right? Where we're watching people play video games. Right. Well, these are simulations that are set up. And this channel, uh, if you go to YouTube.com/user/slash, and it's uh, SirGUI Hell Dragon HQ. I'll put the I'll put the link in the chat room or in the uh, show notes. But it's like. The, the epic battles are like 33,000 immortals versus 1,000 siege <laughs> tanks, right? So they're taking, I saw one, it was like 20,000 stormtroopers against 1,000 Jedis. And they line them up and they let the simulation go. And then based on the rules uh, that these fighters have, uh, my favorite one is 24,000 Satans against I, one Jesus. <laughs> I just saw that one. I was like, one Jesus versus 24,000 Satans. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, nice. but, you know, there's 10,000 Jedi versus 40,000 Spartans, uh, which is really cool. They've also set up some battles where they've built these strongholds. So they've simulated some, some strongholds. They've lined them up like maybe it would have been in history. And then they've sent these, ba you know, they sent these armies against each other and they just let it run out in a simulation. These um, are the type of videos that you start watching one and then it's four in the oh morning. Oh, my and God. You You've watched yeah. you know, the whole channels worth. Yeah, droids yeah. versus at at walkers. You know, uh, clones versus rancors. I just Ult like the creativity, like you said, this style of video. The amount of time that this took to create, especially that first channel that you linked out to, um, super cool. Yeah, it's just been I love interesting channels that have a unique spin like that. Yeah, yeah, and it's definitely a new style. I'm seeing it a lot more. I'm and especially with history. I've been watching a lot of history lately. And, and I'm seeing some really creative history being done very, very well. Right. You know, and it's just very, very interesting. I was watching a series on the first, the very first crusade, you know, so all the, in 1099, all of the, the, you know, all of Europe saying, you know, we ought to go, we ought to go get Jerusalem back. Like it's been a thousand years. We ought to probably go back and get it. <laughs> right back there. <laughs> and 
there's you'd think like okay it was a noble cause and all the noblemen got together and they're like we're just going to go down and take it it was a mess like it was a chaos it was actually two two waves first led by a bunch of peasants who didn't really know what they were doing and they kind of screwed the whole thing up so by the time the royals got down there the whole thing was messed up you had foes fighting foes and friends fighting friends it was just a mess right i find that terribly interesting explained in a way that's funny humorous and easy to understand mm -hmm. and you can learn a lot of history pretty quick that way and that's what i need because i never had a huge interest in history and not that i didn't have good history teachers i just i don't know i it never i was never interested in it but yeah. like you said since we've had these new ways on like on youtube and some of the podcasts that we've had they're history based yeah. uh, are a great way to learn about it yeah no it's just been really interesting and so i've learned a ton about you know and then graphical representations of like i've watched these videos of every year in the um you know they'll, they'll show a map and they'll say every year represented in a second and it will show you who is where and who is running the country and you can see rose uh, rome rise up and take over all of europe and you know and then it, it declines and all these other empires pop up and it's a really, really interesting way. If you have context and you're you're fascinated by those, like, why are things the way they are? Man, it has never been a better time to be on YouTube watching and catching other people's creativity. So another reason to go out and um, and I think watch some interesting stuff on YouTube. You got, definitely got to curate it. But, man, there is some super creative uh, stuff that's out there. Mike, you've, you guys have made a jump. You did YouTube TV, but is there, is there more to this story when we think of the interactive TV p bit that's in there? Well, it was just an interesting thing that we picked up. So Hannah and I actually have, we still have Cox, but we're paying for YouTube TV because it's that much better. And I don't mind paying the extra money because it's that much better. And, but we were watching the voice. Hannah and I really like the voice and Carson Daly's up there. He's talking about voting and we, we always watch it. Like we don't have to, we can't watch live. So we always, always watch our recordings. We never vote anyway, but the voting for this one, he says, Hey, you know, voting on Twitter, on our app, like usual, but also now you can vote via your Cox remote or your, uh, I think it was Comcast or Xfinity remote, uh, by using your voice. So, you know, all the Cox remotes now have the voice. You can just say, vote for this person on the voice and that works. So it, it, instantly when they said that, I'm like, okay, this is interesting because this is more interactive TV. We've always had voting and live shows like that, but, and I've always thought that, okay, it's kind of, kind of wonky going back and forth on your phone and you retweet on Twitter with a hashtag to vote. This could revamp live TV for me for what I was, I started to get down this path of, okay, it's kind of cool with Cox and Xfinity, you have the remote, but we all know that, you know, live TV is moving more towards online. No matter who you get it from, you're viewing it on an Xbox or, a, you know, some sort of streaming device where you have a remote in your hand and you can digitally do something that's connected to the internet. If we had more interaction, think about like, I'm watching, I'm thinking of HQ trivia. The reason that blew up is because it is a live, it's almost like a live TV show that is all in one. It's on your phone. You're watching it and you're answering the questions. We could have game shows that are way more interactive with live TV. Live TV could, I think, re take off again. Uh, people love watching things and then also interacting in whatever form, chat room. Think of Twitch. People love watching Twitch. They love live podcasts because they watch, they interact it kind of brings you back and Twitter Twitter brought live TV to a place. I don't think we realized that it did when people started live tweeting shows and there was the hashtags and you would be talking about the show while you're watching it. And all the shows had their hashtag in the bottom corner. That really, that changed the game for watching live TV because you could have a live conversation about it with the world. And then it kind of started to die down. People don't do it as much anymore. They still do it a little bit. If there's another round of this whole interactive live TV, I'd be very interested to see what they do with it. And I just thought that it was interesting that even the old school cable companies are getting in on it with, with their voice remote, which is interesting. I kind of like that idea. And I was like, oh man, but, li but live TV on something like YouTube TV or Sling or PlayStation View, all those are primed and ready for someone to come in and really be a disruptor in, in the live TV game. And whoever does it first, it's, it's going to be great. Whoever brings HQ trivia to the TV, uh, I think I think I think that'll be a big winner. I think you'll start to see a lot more people going back to live TV and kind of bringing it back from the bowels of it was it was starting to go away there for a little bit, and it still is. 
Uh, I know a lot of people don't have cable subscriptions and besides the big networks uh, that you can get over the air, a lot of people don't have that anymore. Well, we're doing a form of live TV right here. I mean, think about it. It's yeah. we're right. And folks can write in the chat room and interact with us and it affects the show. And I, I'm kind of wondering when network television, or I hate to say that, but any kind of television kind of catches on to this, uh, this idea of being more in real time and real thought, like being yes. able to take. Now, and that was kind of my point. Is yeah. yeah, more of that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how that goes. See, it's the really hard. They have, they could do some really cool things. Yeah. No, right on. It'll be interesting to see how that goes. Curating that much input is really, really difficult. And so, it's you know, you got to crack some codes on that. You got to, I think there might be need to be some machine learning or some advanced AI to kind of help moderate and track what's sentiment and how people are feeling and what's being said and some of those. But man, you mentioned somebody, you know, you're on a big show and somebody gets mentioned. That's a big deal. Uh, one of the guys I watch, Carter Thomas, I watch him for Coin Mastery. Mm -hmm. Every day I catch his video. He, he got on John Oliver's show as an example of some of the crazy, you know, podcasters or, 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 you know, vloggers or whatever you want to call them. And he shows a cameo and he shows four pictures and you see Carter Thomas, his, his background looks the same, right? Well, I'm sure he picked up, you know, some, some action from that, from just being on the show. So totally. you get mentioned on some of those things and it's pretty amazing. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who live to have their, um, you know, to have their name mentioned, their 15 minutes of fame, you know, kind of whatever. So, yeah, be interesting to see how that goes. I, I too, you know, I don't have those, but I do have a, a NVIDIA Shield, and you can talk into that thing. Mm -hmm. And it does some fun stuff to it. We're not using enough of it, but um, I, I certainly need to use more. You drop in Cox at the end of your your commitment? Are they, sure. are they gone? Yeah, okay. they're, I'm only going to keep them for internet. Yeah. And uh, I wish, I do wish that xbox had stuck with some form of whole room microphones so so they were really focusing for a long time there on connect and now the connects if you have one of the old connects you have to get this adapter to even make it work with the new xbox and they haven't really come out with a new one as far as i know and they have hey they have cortana on the xbox it's fantastic it works really well if you're wearing a headset it's great but I want to be able to have, because we use our Xbox as our main system, I need to figure out a way to have a microphone plugged into that so that we can use the Cortana features even when I don't have my headset on. Because right. now that they've gone away from the Kinect, it's, it's, it's interesting that they moved away from the Kinect so fast and still don't have another way to bring video and audio into the Xbox. And they got some smart speakers, but they really haven't taken off. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they're relying on people wearing the headsets. I'm just not sure. Yeah, will we ever get to a point where we've got a Star Trek communicator on our shirt and and that becomes, you know, how, how I mean, that's actually a really good placement for it. And it really is. You know, yeah. and it doesn't look dorky coming off your head. And, you know, I don't I think know. We're in a space speaker. now where it just needs to be in the room. It just yeah. needs to be, needs to be yeah. listening. And what's interesting to me is why has Xbox not come out with just a, for now, just give us a remote with the voice on it? Because all the, sure. the official Xbox sure. media remote does not have a microphone on it, and they have Cortana. I'm like, why would I think that just makes sense to have some interaction with Cortana besides put on a bulky headset? Right. Yeah, I think we're still figuring all that out. You know, uh, what's going to work? I think between Google and Amazon and Microsoft and Apple, who I think is four of four in this space. I mean, Siri, who was a leader for the longest time, has trailed back to just kind of irrelevant irrelevant yeah. that's not even a word Ir, uh irrelevant there we go i think i was trying to say irreverent and <laughs> irrelevant and the, and maybe a little too much rum in my coke i'm go. just i'm just saying um so um yeah well i i think the the world of digital assistance is we're just we're in the early days and there's going to be some really interesting you know ways by the way on on the uh, amazon devices if you just say open Spreaker, it'll start a player and then you can say play home gadget geeks and you get all kinds of controls that it'll ask you if you, the first time, if you want to enable the Spreaker skill. And if you say yes, 
then you, man, you have all kinds of control over home gadget geek. So if you haven't way more useful. Yeah. If you haven't figured that out yet, you can do it on tune in. You can say, Hey friend, uh, open, uh, no play home gadget geeks on tune in. You can say that. And then, um, and that works generally, but more recently Spreaker's created their own, um, their own skill. So you say, Hey friend, open Spreaker. And then, and then she'll say like, Hey, what, you know, here, here are your voice commands. And then you just say, play home gadget geeks, a really easy way to listen to us. I like it. Do that. Speaking of Cox, I just an update. I, you know, I went, I went unlimited this month cause I blew through my last, last week I, or last year, no, last month I blew through my, um, my usage. I am already, so I'm, uh, maybe 10 days in 10, 11. And I'm up to 2.3 terabytes of data transferred. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, we're moving cool all too. of, yeah, we're, we're moving all of, you know, coming off the HP server, going on to the Moro data box, which has been really, really cool. It has had a limitation because I've thrown so much data at it. It has stopped me at times to say, if, if I'm going to cache this stuff, I need a backup copy of it at Backblaze before I take it off because I haven't fully moved it yet. You need to wait a second. So it is, I've overwhelmed it, uh, okay. you know, throwing 500 or 600 gig at it at a time. It has a one terabyte drive on it, but it's doing some smart caching in there. And so, which I think is really cool. It's stopping me from adding more to it before it backs up the other stuff. Right. Some, and so while I've been doing that, I've been throwing 150, 200 gig a day. Um, at getting all my files backed up. So every night I come home and I move, I drag another 150 gig in there, 200 gig in there. It's got space now and it moves the other stuff out and then puts those in and then starts moving them to back place. And I haven't got a back base bill yet. So we'll have to see how that goes. But that um, that project continues to to move on. I'm a little, um, I'm a little biased because of course, Moro Data gave me the box. That's a $500 deal, right? So I'm, I'm, that's pretty nice, right? I'm, I, I didn't pay for it. I'm testing it. I'm using it. I'm talking about it. Um, so for the average, but if you were starting at zero and you were thinking about getting into a NAS and you were going to spend three to $500 anyways, uh, and then Backblaze probably, and again, I haven't got a bill, but I think it's going to be as expensive as my crash plan was or pretty right. close. And it's two birds with one stone. Yeah. And and I would really say, you know, if you're talking about moving 10 or 12 terabytes, okay, this is probably not the device. Right. This little device is not the device for you. They have bigger versions of it that's available. But if you're the average guy and you have between 500 and a terabyte or 500 and even two terabytes, probably take you, depending on your internet speed, it'll take you a while to get all that stuff in. Good little box, super fast. I mean, it is just designed to do data. So... Mike, I, I know I've had this thing for, I don't know, six months, and I'm finally kind of getting to using it. I kind of like it. I'm excited to get all my data moved over and kind of have it all cached there and have it backed up on Backplace and, and be in a whole new world. And it's not user upgradable for storage, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm sure you could hack it in some ways, but I haven't, I'm not going to crack it. That's just, yeah. they, and they've come up with some bigger boxes. So they have some, you know, when we talk with them last and we'll have them on in a couple more months, they've got some bigger boxes. They're just more expensive. It would be kind of cool if you could dangle hard drive, like, uh, you know, do an external mm -hmm. drive off the end, just to have more of your cash. Yeah. Yeah. And it's got a, I mean, it's got USB drives. It's that little, it's that uh, Intel Nook. Right. Design. So it's got so I it if in the future. That'll be, they would yeah. open those up. I don't, you know, you, it, you're going to sacrifice speed. And the whole idea is to have True. speed, have speed, only have what local, what you use and keep everything else in the cloud. That's, That's kind of, that, yeah, I guess you're illuminating the point when you start adding drives, you might as well have a traditional. Yeah. Jazz. Build a home server. And they've got some things where you could, you know, you can get more storage local if that's what you need. You know, in my setting, yeah, I'm a little inconvenienced by having to manually move data over over the next couple of weeks to get it all there, right. right? It's one of those things. But think about this. Once I'm set up and it's working, I really only have, I probably create three gig worth of data a week for podcast files. That is going to handle that no problem. Right, like, totally. When I need a file, if it's not there, it's going to pull it down from, from back place. Mm -hmm. and I've already, I've, I've already done that. In fact, some of the early files I put in it were like my, 
my uh, graphics, some of the music that we use for the podcast, some of those kinds of things. How's my, by the way, how's my video? Have we been okay? It, start, it just started to get jittery. Um, you and know, your audio started getting jittery, but it's the first time. That may be one of those things where somebody, you know, so maybe one of the uh, SIA devices or the the storage is taken off. Um, no, things are looking okay. So um, that's one of those things where it's going to take me a while to get there. But when I needed those graphics, it just, there was a, I went to the, windows file to find it. it there was a little a transparent x which means it's there but it's not i clicked on it i waited a second and boom popped up it was there yeah it downloaded went out pulled it down downloaded it yeah pretty cool so those guys are doing some great work uh tony and and um folks tony's been a good support for me over there in in um in helping me out so check it out if you haven't if you haven't looked at it in a while m o r r o moro data Give it a, give it a try, Mike. You've been running. We talked about this in the pre-show. Yeah, uh, maybe a new appreciation for a device that you uh, not using as much of, or, or or tell me about your watch. Well, so I've been wearing my Apple Watch, and you guys know. So I had Generation One for a long time. Just upgraded around Christmas time to the Gen Three with cellular, and I mean, I've I had, I have I was already addicted to my watch. I can never say enough good things about it. I love it. Uh, all the amazing features, but they are just. They're so right. I should have taken them up on their marketing. I just wasn't a runner. Uh, I wasn't. I just wasn't. I had had kids in that time. And I just wasn't working out. I wasn't swimming. This thing is 10 times more valuable if you are a runner. And I'm going to say especially the Gen 3. Whether or not you get cellular is up to you. But the Gen 3 has GPS built in. And I'm, I'm now second guessing myself. Maybe the Gen 2 did. I know for sure my Gen 1 did not have GPS. But the fact that I go on a run, I put in Bluetooth earbuds, whichever ones. I, I like the AirPods. I also switch back and forth. I'm trying to see for running if I like my AirPods better or if I like my Power Beats better. But essentially, you throw all of your music onto the watch. You have Bluetooth headset that connects to the watch. And now that this watch has a data connection and GPS, when you go on a run, you've got all of your tracking, you've got your music, you've got everything you need to work out. And that's all without your without your phone so the thing i like about it too is that with the cellular option i can go out and i can be on a run and hannah can call me and i'll i'll get the call through my headset and this it just has changed the game i think now that now that i had the gen 3 and i've run with it only going out with this and having all the features of my phone in my watch is just a complete and and total game changer so i've been really digging it no that's cool and you're using the ear pods I've been switching back and forth between the AirPods and the uh, Power Beats just to see which ones I like better for running. The AirPods are great. And the thing I love about those AirPods is they seamlessly switch. I don't need to repair and pair. They switch from my phone to my watch to my computer to whatever. Uh, but I've been switching back and forth. But yeah, like I said, I threw I threw some playlists on here. I have the Nike. So on here I've been using because it's kind of it's kind of they have an integration with Apple is the Nike Run Club app. So I just run with my watch. I come back. I have the full map of where I went. It knows speed. It knows everything because this thing already has the GPS. My inter I do want to know if I didn't have the cellular version, if I didn't have a data feed, uh, would I be missing anything on those runs? I don't think I would because if it has GPS, that's really all it needs to, to track everything. But uh, the cellular just adds that extra bit of awesome because I can get my text messages and my I can be responding to text messages as I'm running because it'll pop up. I'll hit respond. I can just through my headset. I can just be Dude, doing everything. I don't is, even have my phone with me. Running is hard enough. Just, just run. Don't don't focus on answering tasks. But I, the possibility is oh, there. It's kind of cool, no, right? I like know. if you need to be accessible. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, Hannah's at home in. with two kids. If something bad happens, she can still call me, and I just don't have to haul my phone around anymore. So this was just a total game changer for me. And th I am so late to the game. This is news to no one. <laughs> like, this is, it's, it's good, though. It's a good reminder how those things can be motivating yeah. to us. Well, and just how there are a lot of ones out on the market. And I think I'm just this is the first time I saw the true value of the price of the Apple Watch and the versatility of it. You can do everything with this. It has a lot of storage. I think this thing has 12 gigs of storage. So I mean, that's a lot of music if you want to throw your music on there. But with cellular... You can also stream your music, so I wouldn't need to store anything if I didn't want to. Uh, I put it on there just because it's a lot easier. It's just a, it's, it's awesome. It works out oh, extremely that's... well for working out. Have, have you used the Nike app on there? Yeah, that's what on I'm the watch? Using. Oh, yep. You are using that. Okay. All right. Sarah was talking to me, so I, I probably missed that part. No, but... that's fine. Yeah. So I'm um, using the Nike Run Club because they have a connection kind of with Apple. Yep. yep. And it's it's been good. So yeah. I'm no, I, 
We'll see if this lasts. I have heard from a lot of runners. They like that Nike app. And, uh, and I do think my next set of, of earbuds will be uh, the, the pods. Uh, and I'll put, I'm actually going to put these uh, earbud um, ear covers on them. Cause I really love the soft cover of these. Okay. And I'll, so I'll squeeze them in. I think I can do it. And then um, man, that they're just sharp. Uh, and I know they're expensive, but that's, they just work. Well, they're sharp. At, at, they're flawless, though. Like the experience yeah. with them, the fact yeah. that you pull one out and it pauses. How many times are you going to run and you need to like someone stops you or you run into someone you know and you pull one out and then you have to, oh, then your music's still playing and everything's running. You pull one out and it just stops. You put it back in, it plays. You <laughs> tap on it, it goes That's to the crazy. next one and it's all within here. Yeah, those those uh, AirPods are fantastic. Ted, Ted wants to know if you're mining Nike coin on your watch. I didn't know that was possible. I didn't either. I don't even know if it's a real is that a joke or is that a real thing? Joking. I think he's joking with us. I think he's probably joking. Hey, too. so Sarah comes down. She was, she rarely interrupts me during the show. Well, and I, yeah, I had, a, I extended my spiel there for a little. Thank you, before. thank but you. She's like, hey, you won't believe this. I got this new purse, so you want to watch the video for this? Okay. In, in it, this is a attached inside is a little battery, a little twenty two whatever, twenty two thousand yeah. whatever battery, right? And then. Attached to that are three different are the three different cables that you no can charge, all included in the purse. A twenty four dollar purse. Every she thought this was pretty cool. This is this is her. That is pretty cool. That her that, contribution goes inside, zips up. Gentlemen, get your ladies a very tech Man, there you uh, go. center purse like that. Battery built in with the cables. Not bad. And all no, the different cool. all the different kinds that you need. Right. I mean, I yeah. didn't, I didn't look at those, but. It's got uh, USB, so for whatever you need there, and I and I wonder if you get this battery. That's out. probably how you charge it. Yeah, and then a dual uh, lightning yep. and USB mini micro whatever that is micro USB for the for the Android phones. Nice. So, yeah, no C, no USB C. Oh, and this does this plug into this one? Oh, I'm probably gonna break it if I do that. So, anyways, yeah, in a in a some purse accessories for you, home gadget geeks for the ladies. There you go. Emily's not out there tonight. I haven't seen her. So, but um, you know, I Targus sent me this bag and it's got like, all kinds of crap in it. I should have, you know, one of the things I didn't talk about all the batteries. I got two really super good batteries when I was at the MVP summit. I should brought those on the show. Well, shoot. All right. Let's see. Um, running. I had one more thought I was going to do before we kicked over. Let me check the notes real quick. Phones, running, watches. I don't know. I one guess more I'm thing on that watch. It is yeah. pretty impressive too. The battery life. They have they have figured something out. I don't know if it was an upgrade in the Series Three of a size thing. It doesn't seem any bigger or software. I have worn this thing all day. I have tracked or run with it. It um, has been on cellular for a wild day. When I went out and about, I didn't take my phone with me. And I still got 68%. Now, I know that doesn't sound like much because a lot of people are used to watches lasting longer. But on the Apple Watch, I mean, Hannah is on a Series 1, and she's down to 10% by the end of the day. And she's not doing any cellular or running. So they've done something to really – you can get a full two days and a full two days of hard use on these things now, which – was kind of my biggest complaint about them in the past was that you for sure needed to be charging every night. No longer the case, which is kind of nice. Yeah, it's an, it's it's getting better that way. Yeah, it's getting much much better, and they're one of the few that are really staying re like relevant. You look at a lot of other manufacturers. Yeah, they're still making smart watches, but you're not hearing much about them. Uh, Apple Watch, I think, kind of wins in that market, and they weren't for a while. But and maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm just not seeing much on the Android side that's really taking over like the apple watch has no it, but i think it's I, the tight integration they have with I, with uh, ios yeah i'm wondering if it'll be my next watch you know i got this fitbit ulta mm -hmm. and i stopped wearing it I, it's just not compelling right and um you know you're kind of like and, and i'm a garmin 220 so this is an older not a smart watch just a running watch it's one of my favorite watches super light um it's been a great little watch and this is kind of the one i go back to and actually i time my walks i time my stairs, I time my runs, um, I time my bike. Works great for what I want to do it for. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know if I need to track every second, but I have been kind of wondering when this breaks. You know, do I, do I move to an Apple Watch? I think you do, and I always made fun of the bands that you could swap out. Like, who's going to do that? That actually makes you so like you get in the habit of wearing your watch every day, and the fact that you can change the band just helps because I have my. 
quote formal bands, right. That I'll put on when I go to work or if I go to an event and then I have my usual white band that I wear most of the time, I have the black band. You kind of have these bands that you, you really can wear this watch whenever because it doesn't, you can make it look not sporty if you don't want to. Yeah, no, for sure. Well, is it's, Wear OS, it's, is that Android? I think it is. I think it is. It just has never really gone anywhere. And even, I think even on the Apple ecosystem, it works, but it's kind of just, I don't know if I'd call it exciting, Mike. I think it really is, it appeals to athletes or to runners or, and that's a pretty niche market. Like, yeah. I still don't know if the average guy is getting full use out of a $500 watch. I mean, that buys you a lot of watch. <laughs> you know, if you well, want to, you can get them for a lot cheaper than that now. Though. Yeah, that's well, so what's the bottom? What, what's the bottom now? If I wanted to get in on an Apple watch, what's the very bottom? I haven't looked. Now, if you want cellular capability, uh, let's just and I wouldn't Apple watch series three. I wouldn't, I wouldn't take cellular. It's kind of nice though. Yeah. Okay. No, I get it. I so, get well, it. Let's see what the price difference would be. So you can get into a, you would need a 42 millimeter because. Yeah. Because I'm a, paint, uh, uh, you're a man. Because <laughs> I want to look burly. Uh, Just saying that made me awful. <laughs> 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 Looks like. Oh, I'm no Rennie Phillips, but. Oh man, actually the price. Okay. So you only have to pay an extra $70 to get into the cellular, which actually isn't okay, too bad. So let's just say let's with cellular. What What's it going to run me? With cellular. I'm trying to get the size here. We'll get that figured out. 359. That's not too bad. I paid 250 for this Garmin watch. So hundred bucks more and way better. Yeah. That's probably my next. I definitely will wait for this one to break. Like though, I don't, I don't have any. I don't, I don't, I'm not in a spot. I'm ready to replace. It right. just works. I want to get my value out of it. So I don't, uh, I have no intentions of training at this point or of uh, trading at this point. So, man, the rum is really kicking in. All right. Well, well we should get into some crypto if we're going to, go. if we're going to, if we're going to do some, uh, some drunk podcasting, we should probably. It's always got to be about crypto. It's got to be in crypto. Mike, uh, uh, thanks for, uh, for, hanging out with me tonight on this always fun to just you and me always kind of good to catch up on some news and totally. we we type these things out and i kind of go are we gonna have enough and then we always seem to do so some great stuff keep going for another few hours yeah no i appreciate uh of course when you guys interact with us either facebook or twitter or any of those kinds of things we appreciate what you do out there it's just always kind of fun to interact if you got some questions on anything throw that out there and and the, this community is awesome so i appreciate your support of that if you are uh, out the live show, hang around for the crypto. I've noticed lately, Mike, as soon as we start talking crypto, like half the chat room leaves. They're just like, like ah, eh, I'm, out. Good. I'm out. You want to stay around. Tonight, you want to stay around because we're going to talk about what's it worth. And if you haven't um, if you haven't joined us on Patreon, the last couple ones, this one and last week are free. So just head out to theaverageguy.tv slash Patreon. And uh, you can listen to them or download them for free. It's super easy to get done. I may make that permanent if I get, if more of you start watching these things, I may make that a permanent deal. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but um, I was trying this Patreon thing out to see if it would work. Actually, many of you joined without any rewards. And of course, we appreciate that um, as well. It's always really, it's always, it's a lot easier when you do it that way, but we appreciate your sponsorship of the show. Uh, helps me do some things when I need to replace stuff in the network or pay for things to get stuff done here or whatever. When we think about services that we use or even gadgets, uh, if we want to test something out, we appreciate your sponsorship. So thanks for doing that over there on Patreon. Don't forget, you can always contact us. Send us an email, jim at guy.tv. You know, there was a bunch of you sending me emails for a while and that kind of dried up. So I hope you guys are okay. You don't have to send me emails, but... It's kind of nice when you do. Jim at TheAverageGuy.tv. I always appreciate those. Mike mentioned Twitter at Jay Collison. Mike, what is yours again? Uyghur Tech. W-I-E-G-E-R. Is how you spell Uyghur and then Tech. If you're new to the show, head over there and follow us. Not just to follow us, but to uh, to interact with us. We like that more. I don't care how many followers I have. My daughter still taunts me, though. She thinks she'll be verified before I am. On oh, okay. She's taunting me, Mike. Taunting Challenge me. accepted. She is taunting me. So... Um, no, I don't care. I just, I'd rather have interesting conversation. I don't care about the numbers. Don't forget, but you know who does care about the numbers? Uh, that uh, Maple Grove Partners stuff. Those guys are all about the numbers. Head over to uh, Maple Grove Partners 
Secure.com to get some information. If you need media hosting, it's Secure Reliable High Speed Hosting for people that you know and you trust. That's Christian. Christian's been super busy, so he's been hard to get on the podcast, but uh, he's doing a great job over there at Maple Grove Partners. Plans start as little as 10 bucks a month. If you're thinking of setting something up, you want to set it up over there at Maple Grove Partners, he'll do anything. So give him a ring, maplegrovepartners.com. Don't forget you can get us downloaded on the iPhone or Android app that we have just for you, free. Mike, I'm actually thinking, so I'll probably ask LastPass in August. That's when their support is up. If they want to sponsor it again, it'll be a miracle if they do. I just, they keep saying yes. And to me, that's a miracle. I think the next round, if they say no, I think the next round sponsored by our Patreon subscribers. There that's what I think. Yeah. 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 yeah, we'll figure out some way to change the graphics and make that work. It's it's pretty cool. But we thank LastPass for their sponsorship, unless they throw money at me and uh, decide to do it again. But I, they're getting bigger. You know, they were logged me yeah. in and Cisco and there's a whole bunch of companies in there. They, I keep getting notes from them saying they've been bought by somebody else, but they've whoever's bought them has allowed them to do some great work. So, if you haven't tried out there, uh, if you haven't tried out LastPass, give it a try. LastPass.com. It's free. They have a free plan, or you can. I think it's twenty four bucks a month. Not twenty four bucks a month. I think it's twenty four dollars a year. Yeah, maybe it is, is a it? month. No, maybe it is. No. Is it a year? I think yeah. it is a year. So head out there. I haven't looked at it in a while. Head out there, and uh, if you haven't tried LastPass, get all your all your passwords covered. I use the crap out of that thing. Me too. And, uh, it's across the board. My one of my favorite out it. Neither can I. Yeah. I'm just like, and when I, I don't have a password in there, I'm like, what was I thinking? Why have I not? <laughs> well, now I have no clue. It could be anything. <laughs> no. And I'm like, I get on a PC and it's not there. And I'm like, Oh, I'm downloading it right now. Yep. Or I mean, it's one of the very first things I install uh, on a fresh install. I just put last pass on. I can't, uh, can't live without it. So we are live every Thursday, 8 PM central nine Eastern out here at the average guy.tv slash live next week. Dwayne Robinson's coming back. He's got some things he want to share with us, not just crypto. He's got some new stuff that he's been doing that he, he pinged me the other day. He said, dude, need to be on the show. Dwayne, you're on jump in. Here. He's always, he's always super interesting. And then my, the next week, my co-host, Michael Ibrant, my co-host from theme Thursday, we're going to blend Gallup and and home gadget geeks together. D- d- don't don't worry, we're not going to get into the Gallup stuff. Although we could if you want to. We are going to. Micah is a gadget girl. I did not realize she loves these kind of family and home gadgets. She uses a ton of them. So we're going to talk about some of the apps she uses to keep her kids entertained. She's got this thermos or this heating mug that keeps her coffee warm. We're going to talk about Ember, I think, or something like that. We're going to talk about that. So she's coming on two weeks. So every Thursday, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern, live, 8 p.m. here. Come join us. We'll be back next Thursday with the live show. We'd love to have you join us. Mike, thanks for joining me. With that, we'll say goodnight, everybody.